So aim of therapy should be not only control of hyperglycemia, you'll have to conserve beta cell of pancreas, we have to overcome the insulin resistance, and we have to prevent cardiovascular morbidity. So these are the things. Control of hyperglycemia, conservation of beta cells of pancreas, overcoming insulin resistance, and prevention of cardiovascular morbidity. This is what we are talking about. This is AD again. We have given this patient specific for patient specific target approach. This is the approach to management of hyperglycemia, where you have the disease, you have the more stringent, this is the A1C. F7, so you want to keep below 7 or you give one relax up to 7.5 or 8. So they say those who have risk of potentially associated hypoglycemia and other drug adverse effect, those who yes, then you keep the A1C on higher side because they may develop more of hypos and they may have put problems like those who have hepatic disorder, those who have chronic liver failure, those who are lean and thin, those who are elderly, you keep the A1C maybe around 7 or 7 plus. But they, if they are normal, young, and having no risk of hypoglycemia, keep A1C below 6.5 or 7, 6. Duration of diabetes, duration is more. Long standing diabetic, you could be later relaxed. But newly detected diabetic, one has to be controlling diabetes well because they have to live long for with diabetes and that can create problems. Life expectancy, those who have life expectancy are lesser at the age of 80, I am comfortable, Babaji is okay, sugars are around 200, I am comfortable, he's not passing urine, not getting up, okay. If patient is life expectancy more, the patient is 30 years or 35 years of age, then one has to control diabetes well, keep A1C below, below uh, 6.5 or so. Relevant comorbidities, if patient is having already CBA, renal failure, hepatic failure, then why you want to control well? But those who do not have any comorbidity, keep A1C around 6.5. So, and those who have established cardiovascular already having CAD, like in accord, you know, people died more because those who, who were taken, they had associated comorbidity, CAD, and many of them die of Hypoglycemia, so vascular complications like CVA, CAD, peripheral vascular disease, if they have, then you relax, otherwise you control them well. And those who expected treatment efforts, attitude, patient says, I am highly motivated. Say, whatever you say, doctor, I am ready to take myself, my care, my wife is young, or my children are there with me, they can take care of me. The highly motivated. One say, I don't want to do anything. Once a year I do my sugar, then you have to be a little bit relaxed. So depending on motivation and, and whether they have resources available, they have glucometer, they are nearby hospital, doctor is there, you control them well, otherwise you limit it. All these factors, the duration of diabetes, life expectancy, comorbidities, their motivation, their resources, their pocket, their support, it all helps. If, yeah, yeah, there is the duration of diabetes, if the young patient, you control them well, and then you could be related. Like, so this is how the patient approach, centric approach tells you how to do, how to deal with the patient with diabetes, how well or you should control, and how could you be relaxed in the elderly comorbidity with you know problems. You should be relaxed, you should not be, because you are not going to do good if you control at the age of 80, a patient with you know severe a patient on ESRD, little bit relaxation is needed enough. So this is what the patient-centric approach is. And these are the guidelines. Uh, so I'll wait before I go to medication properly, let us see the guidelines. All the guidelines, they say, <coughs> start with lifestyle, lifestyle management, and then you start with metformin. This is the monotherapy. And if the people have A1C more than 7.5 so here is then you go for dual therapy metformin with other medication like sulfonylurea glitazone tp4 inhibitor hcl2 inhibitor glp1 receptor along or insulin lifestyle will always be there so depending on the patients you know what do they want then you have to take care of their efficacy their hypoglycemia risk the weight gain the side effect the cost 
So every drug has different. So I'll be talking later on. The patient even is more than 10 day one. They need triple drug therapy. So dual means bad for me plus one of them here. Whatever you have not chosen, you can choose from here. And and this is what the ADA guideline may be a bit older, but this there is there. And then this is AC guideline. What do they say? Start with lifestyle and, and medically assisted weight loss. This is what I was telling you. The weight is very, very important part of management of diabetes. And a patient is overweight, not taking care of that, die. No matter what medication you write, they may not be controlled. So they, uh, those who have at the end of entry, the A1C is less than 7.5. You give monotherapy, then you have the metformin, GLP-1 receptor and analogs, and, and, and then you have uh, DP4 inhibitor, type 2 diabetes, AGI, sulfonuria. So those are in the, this. so metformin and GLP-1 receptor analogs are the one. Now people are talking more of SGL2 inhibitor and DP4 inhibitor. Clitoral zones have gone down, so also sulfonuria, they have their own problems, and I'll be talking later on about it. Then, then if patient is having A1C of more than 7.5, you can add on top of whatever you have not added. So whatever we have not added, we just go it. And if A1C is more than nine, if patient is symptomatic or not symptomatic, you can add this third drug. And then, then we have the entry level patient symptomatic like losing weight, having polyuria, nocturia, then you can go with basal insulin, dual therapy, triple therapy, even the insulin could be added in them. If they have symptoms, they don't have symptoms, you can use three drugs. So this is very important, but you have to be careful about the side effects of medication. Some of them have hypoglycemia, some of them have weight gain, some of them have other problems. So we'll have to see that. So once we are talking about the medication, but everywhere you see the first line, metformin is already there. The first line is the metformin with lifestyle, if patient is not tolerating metformin, they have abdominal problem or they are having anorexia and they are not feeling well, then you can go for other medication. Otherwise, with life itself, metformin is the one which is always there I, as a first line, then you go second line and you go for third line. So you have the lifestyle, we have the diet and exercise, we have the mono and then combination. Insulin is without of it, oral medication, this is what we have talked about this is what all, every guideline suggested. So I've summarized it here. So now we come to medication properly. So what medication we have seen? We have seen metformin, we have seen GLP-1 receptor analog, we have seen SGLT2 inhibitor, we have seen DP4 inhibitor, we have seen glitazones, we have a alpha glucoside inhibitor, we have sulfonuria and some non-sulfonuria secret ago, bromocaptain, colisivim, they came late, almost uh, they are not being used i may or may not cover them but other medication will be talking about